So, introduce yourself. Who are you? So, uh, I'm Nayef Soror. I'm an LA and Chicago based yoga teacher. And uh, I'm also an acro yoga teacher. Acro yoga, that's acro interesting. Yoga. How, how has that experience been for you? Uh, it's been, it's been uh, opening, opening to my life, opening to uh, my spirit. I used to not enjoy other people's contact. I was really, you know, I just like being into, into my introverted own energy. type. Not introverted mm -hmm. necessarily, but more of I didn't like human contact. Like it just made me uncomfortable. But what acro yoga forced you to do is to really evaluate yourself and 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 kind of get past those barriers of what you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And because you're you're touching another person. I was about to ask that. That was my yeah, follow-up there, question. There are no boundaries, right? <laughs> I mean, every, every you know, if you're when you're flowing. It's very intimate, and you're in each other's intimate space, but it's not necessarily sexual. Mm -hmm. It's intimate, um, and it takes you past those boundaries of what you think you're comfortable with and what you think you're not comfortable with. And it's just been opening for my entire life. So now, now it's just random hugs and cuddle puddles everywhere, and I, I really can thank Acro Yoga for that. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how long have you been, you know, practicing yoga particularly? So yoga, just a little over five years. Uh, Acro Yoga, a little over a year. Ah, that's awesome. And like, just what just happened, which is gonna be played over the video. <laughs> we got a big YouTube star to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was really dope. That uh, was. That was. You know, we were just in Times Square and we saw a crowd around her, and I just approached and I said, "Hey, do you want to try some acrobatics?" And she said, "Yeah." So I got her inverted. I got her into a couple poses. The crowd really liked it, and uh, she she was really impressive because she just trusted. She let go and trusted, and and understood that that she was in good hands and that she was safe and she just followed really great direction. That's awesome. So what does it take to be, I guess, become a successful yoga practitioner, even if, if it's just for your, for personal reasons? So successful, I don't, I don't know that I'm a successful yoga practitioner. Um, I am a yoga practitioner, mm -hmm. um, but to me, success in yoga is really defined at showing up on your mat and being present. Um, and living your practice. So uh, I got into yoga initially be for the physical benefits, for um, the benefits of controlling the body. Because I was like, wow, this is really impressive. I needed more flexibility and mm -hmm. more strength. Uh, but what yoga really gave me was a present that I wasn't expecting, and that was control over the mind and control over the spirit. Um, and it's, it, it's in the most beautiful way it changed my life in every single way. Um, in, in, in every single way possible. That, that is... And, and I would live my practice and, you know, uh, everything that I do, I try to incorporate yoga principles of non-harming and truthfulness and um, it's just been, it's been a life transformational practice and journey and, and I'm, I'm still on it. So. It's always a journey. It's, the, yeah. it's always continuing and you did mention you're about to open your own yoga studio. Yes, so tomorrow... Uh, is the grand opening of Ohm Culture in Chicago, Illinois. It's actually in the Fulton Market District. Um, and it's not just a yoga studio, it's actually a um, conscious living space. So what my partner Megan and I really tried to do mm -hmm. was to create uh, a, a safe space for people to go and to explore their yoga practice, whether their yoga practice involves um, straight meditation or their yoga practice involves acro yoga and handstands and all of the you know, uh, more advanced asanas and more advanced postures. Uh, so we have a meditation room in the back that is open to the entire public, whether they are members or not, just to be able to go in and meditate. And we're, True to the mission. Absolutely. And we're really trying to um, bring a higher level of spirit, a higher level of consciousness to all of Chicago. So we're going to be hosting workshops, not just in the yoga and acro yoga space, in the meditation space, but we're actually going to be hosting uh, urban gardening workshops, workshops on tantric yoga, on Thai massage, on other things that... that are all about a higher level of, you know, living, a higher mm -hmm. level of consciousness. Um, and the message has been very well received. So uh, I'm very, very grateful for Chicago for that. So tomorrow's the opening and I, I couldn't be more excited. I fly that's, out tonight. That's awesome. And just, you know, tell me what exactly does you, yoga mean to you? What is it, what significance does it hold in your life? What significance? Um, everything. <laughs> so if I can get a little more specific. <laughs> Yoga means awareness, awareness of the body, mind, and spirit um, in unison for me. And, and I know that that's the kind of a textbook definition, but it really, But if that's the truth, I mean... That, that, that really <laughs> is the truth is, is, you know, yoga has put a lot of really, really important things in my life into perspective. Um, 
And I can tell you, you know, having practiced yoga for five years, I can't tell you the last time I got into an argument. I can't tell you the last time I got into, you know, an altercation or confrontation because I'm just so into my own zone and my own zen that when things happen and, and I just I just breathe through it and, and, and I apply those yoga principles of being comfortable in the uncomfortable situations. Uh, and it's just helped me and, and it's toned down my toned down my everything. So you think if, if somebody's having, you know, personal problems, they're depressed, uh, you know, they're going through a hard time, would that be uh, a recommendation that you would give Absolutely. somebody? Absolutely. So I, I wouldn't say I was depressed, but I was not in a bright place when I found yoga. Um, and I'll never forget the first Shavasana, which is the very last pose of the yoga class where you just lay there. And I felt just this overwhelming sense uh, of relief. Uh, and, and I had not felt that in a really long time. And so I left yoga and I was like, wow, there's something here. I really, I need to explore this a little bit more. And I went back the next day and I was like, I wonder if I can replicate these results. Hmm. And I did. And then I was like, two times might be luck. Let's flip the coin one more time and see. And I was hooked by that third time. And, and you're still and doing it. I'm still doing it and it's a daily practice. Whether I step on my mat or not, it is always a daily practice of being mindful, being conscious in what I eat and what I do and what I say, watching my words, watching my thoughts. Um, that does not mean necessarily not having negative thoughts or mm -hmm. not having bad thoughts. But control, is, he's human, you can't, there's nothing you could do about that. Absolutely, but what it means is acknowledging them for what they are and, and being present in that moment and being present uh, with those emotions and with those feelings. And me personally, I struggle um, just the way I was raised culturally and, and in my family, I was raised to always suppress emotion. Um, and, and yoga's really helped me kind of get out of what, in my opinion, is a bad habit of suppressing emotion and just keeping things bottled up to really truly being able to express yourself and, and, and being comfortable with that expression. That was, you know, that's just one of the major changes that yoga's done for my life. That, that is a, a great answer. I, I like that one a lot. And so, you know, I, I hear you talking a lot about the mindset. So between, let's say, how much physical a ratio, let's see, how much physical, how much mental, would you say, you know, yoga? Yeah. So um, there's eight limbs of yoga, and um, asana, which is the physical practice, the postures are just one of eight limbs. So that speaks for itself, right there. Yeah. So I mean, don't get me wrong. All the, all of the attention goes, and and we're all guilty of it. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing because it's really spread awareness and knowledge. But I am part of the Instagram yoga community and I love that community because I've met some of the closest people in my life um, through Instagram. This, this interview here is through Instagram, yes. you know. <laughs> it, it's, it's connected me to so many just incredible and inspiring people. Um, and that's why I really love that community. But the asana, the physical practice, is really just, just one small facet of what yoga truly can be. Now. Um, for a new practitioner or for an existing practitioner, if that's the only part that they want are interested in, then that's yoga too. Mm -hmm. that's their yoga. Um, there's so much dogma in the yoga world right now where it says, oh, this is yoga and this is not yoga, or that's not yoga. And to me, everything is yoga, if you want it to be. It, it, my yoga is my practice, whether it's on or off the mat, whether it's hmm. doing a handstand or, or just sitting in child's pose. That is yoga to me. Um, now that's not yoga to other people and that's fine too. Some people, you know, practice yoga with hip-hop. Some people don't like music. Some people like to flow. Some people just like static poses. That is all yoga. As long as it's speaking to you and it's nourishing your soul, nourishing um, your energy, then, then that's yoga. That was another great answer. I never really thought of it yeah, like that at all. There's a lot of judgment in the yoga world. It, it, it's, it's so funny because we're the stereotypical non-judgmental -judgment, non people. But, uh, you know, I try to just kind of stay clear of that and say, you know what? If, if you're practicing, whether it's on or off of your mat and you're doing it and you're calling it yoga, then I'm going to call it yoga because that's your practice and that is your yoga and it's not for me to define. That, very good, very good. Now, let's say, now that you mentioned that, wrapping up, um, someone looking to begin, get into yoga, you know, they have an interest in it, what's the step? I mean, obviously they could just walk into a yoga studio and be like, hey, let me sign up. Absolutely. But what step would you give? Even if that was it, what step would you give? Be them? open, 100%, that, that, that is the best. Be open to whatever shows up. Um, you know, getting into yoga for the first time, it, it can be intimidating because, uh, 
people do see all of these advanced practices and handstands and crazy tricks that are being happening and they see that and they're intimidated by it and rightfully so because it's advanced um, but I think for a new practitioner that's getting in just know that the people that are doing these handstands they've been doing this for years right they've they've mastered this but what you don't see is it's the all hard the, work behind the glory that's how it is yeah, that's I mean, how it is. It, it, and, and it's funny because social media, all we do is is Post, we glorify uh, our lives. The highlights, right? it's you the know, highlight the road. highlight room. That's it's it. The highlight road. But you don't see is how many times I've fallen on my butt trying <laughs> handstands. How many times I've failed, and but going in there. I mean, when I first started yoga, I couldn't t take my hands more than six inches past my knees in a forward fold. I think that person needs me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I couldn't. I couldn't get my hands more than six inches past my knees. I was at least a foot and a half away from touching my toes. You know, and that's the most common thing you hear about yoga is you should try it. Oh, I, I'm not flexible. I can't touch my toes. Well, that's, that's how you start. That's that's where you start. That you're the perfect candidate. You win. <laughs> um, and but through that you start to realize you know proper body alignment and what a safe practice is and how you can unify your body movement with your breath and how that alters your mind state of being and how you get this like yoga high um a therapy that, yeah it happens it happens and it happens really fast and faster than you think and, and you know i never in my life have uh, thought i would be doing handstands i never in my life thought i would be flexible. I had never thought that I would be doing these things or meditating. You know, I thought you know meditating was crazy hippie thing, <laughs> and and now it's part of my daily life. It's 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 it is a staple in my life. And without it, I don't I, I don't know what I would do because it has become so much a part of me and who I am as an individual. That without it, I don't think I would be the same person. Wonderful. I know I wouldn't be the same. Person. You know you wouldn't. Yeah, that is that's awesome. So yeah. be open. Open. Remain open to uh, all the possibilities, yeah. to recommendations. Absolutely. To your potential. Absolutely. And what's funny is people are always like, oh, I don't want to go to yoga class because people are going to stare at me because I, I can't do it. Well, it's like when you go to the gym and people are also subconscious of themselves in the gym. They're like, oh, people are going to stare at me. Everyone is so busy staring at, at themselves, themselves. <laughs> that Which nobody realizes what anybody else is doing. Um, it really truly is an individual solo practice um, when I'm on my mat like half the time I forget that there are other people in the room uh, it's just the energy kind of takes over you and you're just I'm staring at bodies but in my head it's just not registering because I'm just breathing you're I'm focusing on zone. self like you said yeah you, you have your your zone your Zen your center absolutely and, and you know I'm focusing on my body on my alignment and seeing you know how does my body feel in this pose does it feel good? Can I go deeper? Can I take this further to my edge? Or am I already at my edge? Have I gone past it? Do I need to back off? Listening to your body and having that conversation with yourself is what happens in yoga. Not, oh wow, look at that person. That doesn't happen. Worrying about other people who's uh, accomplishments yeah, so and then I'm forgetting about to you know focus on yourself they are where they are and you are where you are yes that's it so um yeah just be open and, and know that no one cares what you do I, Go that's to funny you class. said that that's exactly what i posted this morning on instagram nobody really cares nobody about cares. you know what you say or what you plan you're going or what yeah. you're doing really they're focused most people are focusing on Absolutely. what they have to do and, and and normally I would tell you um, normally I would tell you that that's a really selfish thing, but in yoga it's a really beneficial thing because this is a self practice. This you're is working self on self, like yes, you this said. Is, mm -hmm. This is self work. This is um, self exploration. So the goal here is not to be focused on other people. The goal is to be focused on yourself. And then you know after class it's always just the most inviting and warm warm place ever because I mean I've gone up to people that I've never met before and been like wow I noticed that you were able to do something can you help me with that and I've had countless people come up to me and say hey I noticed I saw you doing this it was really impressive can you tell me what I can do differently or how did you learn that and it's just uh, that connection man, awesome that that human connection right there that's where it's at yeah cool so where can people find you if they want you know social media or you have everything um everything that i have on social media is all my name which is nayef zaror um i'm assuming you'll spell that yes on the that, video. yeah it will be there don't worry it's a really difficult foreign name <laughs> I, i'm sorry I, my parents are boaters um, <laughs> but uh yeah so everything i do is on social media and and 
um, Ohm Culture, follow Ohm Culture uh, on, on Instagram as well, O-H-M-C-U-L-T-U-R-E. Um, yeah, and just uh, follow my adventure. There maybe, you go. Maybe be friends, say hi to me when you see me. There you go, awesome. Thank you once Thank again, you. and we look forward to Peace. seeing a lot more. Here's a little song I wrote. You might wanna sing it note for 